Hi, my name is Jeremy. I work for in the R&D department here at Solar Robotics, and uh, been working uh, in the electronics industry for about a decade now. And I've had a little bit of help along the way with uh, soldering, and figured that uh, I'd uh, help anybody else out in the, in the internet world there, and give you a few tips and tricks on how to do some soldering. All right, we're going to start off with uh, talking about some hand tools. Uh, then we'll get into talking about a, uh, soldering equipment, like your soldering iron, some other stuff like that. Uh, get into materials like your solder, flux. Then we'll talk about a little bit about safety and uh, tip maintenance. And then we'll get into soldering theory and finish it off with uh, a little demo that we have for soldering up your useless machine uh, toggle switch. All right, so we're going to start off uh, to introduce you to some of these hand tools that we use. Uh, right here is a pair of wire strippers. As you can see, the gauges are 26 to 16. Those are uh, a pretty good range for a lot of the, the wires that we use in the hobby industry, which are mostly around the 20 to 24 gauge, uh, with probably the most common being 22. Uh, we also got side cutters. They're also called flush cutters. Uh, they're for snipping your components and uh, making sure they don't stick out and, and making sure any sharp bits don't get you. And then lastly, we have needle nose pliers. Uh, these ones have a serrated jaw on them and also they're kind of modified to be a little bit thinner because usually we uh, want to get into tight spaces so we uh, modified ours to be a little bit skinnier. But uh, these are definitely quite helpful in helping you with uh, electronics. So for your soldering equipment, you'll want to have something with a, with a good small tip. So with the Hakko FX888 here, you've got a pencil tip soldering iron. Uh, it has uh, the capability of, to interchange little, little tips there. And it depends if you're doing some surface mount soldering or, or if you're doing through hole soldering or wiring on some heavy gauge wire. Uh, you can change your tips uh, according to what you're soldering to. So. Uh, with surface mount obviously you want a small one and heavy gauge wire you want a big one. Uh, so this guy also has a variable temperature. We usually recommend you stay around 750 degrees for lead free solder. It's a good idea so uh, it keeps your tip in good working order if you're around that area. If you bring it up higher you can you can do that to solder uh, you know heavier gauge wire or uh, large pads on a PCB but we'd recommend going back down to 750 once you're done. So here we go. Uh, we're gonna, we got our solder here. Uh, the stuff that we use at Solar Robotics is called SAC 305 or SAC 305. That means that it's actually uh, tin, silver, copper. Those are the, the beginning letters of the elements of, of which uh, letter is is which uh, material. And then 305 means 3% uh, silver and 0.5% copper, and the rest being tin, so that's uh, 96.5. So we have here some flux. Flux is used to actually help you with your soldering. It uh, allows the solder to wet into the connection, meaning that it gets uh, a good bond with the PCB and the material soldering too. And also it gets the impurities out of the, the area and just lets them float to the surface and allow the solder to get into the, the connection. So flux comes in, a different, in different types. We have the pen type here, a couple different types here. So it has uh, you know, different form factors. Uh, usually with uh, the, the bottle of flux that I showed right at the beginning there, you use a little syringe to dispense it. Otherwise, usually they come in pen formats. So what we got here is some um, Hydro X flux, which is water soluble, and then we have some rosin flux, which is uh, you know not so soluble in water. It uh, needs to have a little bit of alcohol to get it to be cleaned off. And then there's no clean flux, which I don't have, but uh, no clean is the nice that you don't have to clean it. <laughs> it's not very corrosive, and it's uh, also non-conductive. Whereas some of these fluxes, after you uh, you use them, can become conductive, or uh, some of them are actually corrosive as well, so you'll want to clean them off. And with that, you can use a flux dispenser and a little acid brush is what we call these things, or a horsehair brush. And uh, you can 
Now sweep that from, with some alcohol onto the PCB and then sweep that onto uh, a little bit of paper towel and then you'll uh, be able to get that flux off the board and uh, uh, won't uh, come back or bother your connections. So we'll talk a little bit about safety here. Uh, first things first, you're going to want a pair of safety glasses. These guys will protect your eyes from little stray solder bits that uh, come flying up at you from the PCB when you're soldering. Or when you're using your side cutters, little bits of components can always, you know, hit you in the eye. So you want to protect those. Uh, also, uh, if you want to protect your lungs, uh, if you're in an enclosed room or somewhere that doesn't get much ventilation, you'll want to use a smoke absorber. Uh, we have the FA 400 there available to you from HACO. And then uh, finally you want to wash your hands uh, after dealing with flux and solder. It's probably a good idea before you do any eating or anything like that. You'll definitely want to have your hands washed. Alright, let's talk about some tip maintenance. It's important when you're soldering to have a good clean tip. And so you'll want it to be nice and shiny and silver all the way around. You don't want to see any corrosion, any dark um, coloring at all on that tip. So. Uh, first of all, when you pull your solder iron out, you can put some solder on that tip and uh, you know, brush it off with either you know a brass sponge like we got in this area, or you can use a wet sponge and clean it off there. Either or, uh, your preference. And then if you ever have some corrosion, like it's really you know unable to be cleaned by just putting a little bit of uh, solder on it, we recommend using what's called tip tinner and so you can get this stuff at any local electronics uh, store and um, well more so on the hobby electronics side of things and then what you do is you just put your tip in there push it around a little bit and uh, the the stronger acid inside of this can actually uh, get all that corrosion off of there and uh, it replaces it with a little bit of solder that's uh, mixed into this uh, this concoction so that's it, so it's important to uh, yeah, definitely keep your tip clean uh, so you're able to make a, a good solder joint in the end. So here's two examples of bad solder joints. As you can see here, we have uh, the solder making a good connection to the PCB pad, but unfortunately it's not really making a good connection with the lead of the component. It's kind of got a gap over here. So that's uh, a cold solder joint, and then we have another cold solder joint. Well, at this time, it's made a good connection to the leg of the components, but uh, as you can see, it's not really touching the pads. So these are two examples of bad solder joints. So here's an example of a good solder joint. As you can see, it kind of looks like a volcano. The solder is uh, attached itself to the PCB pad, and then kind of went in a concave shape all the way up to the up the leg and uh, made a good solid connection. Just like tinning the tip of your soldering iron, it's important to keep the, the leads of your wires tinned as well. It actually helps the solder flow into it when you're making a, a connection. It also helps you bend the wire into that connection and uh, make it stay there a little easier when you have a little solder on there. All right, after we've print pre-tinned our wires, uh, I think we'll be ready to start assembling this useless machine. So we'll start with this connection down here, put in our crossover wire, then uh, put in our black lead of our battery. There we go. And then we'll solder the connection. So when soldering, you'll want to maybe put a little dab of solder on the other side to get the the whole joint flowing and then you'll want your, to add your solder to the opposite side to actually have it flow onto the connection and into the wires. Okay so we've pre-prepped our switch here and soldered on some connections and now let's solder it on to the toggle switch. So we'll take our positive lead of our battery and then one side of the switch put those both in and then hold on to the wires here, bend them up so they stay in place and then we'll solder it together.
There we go. So we've also pre-prepped our motor here, soldered the wires on. Now we'll take those and solder them to the middle connections of the toggle switch here. Put those through. Now solder them on. as my switch kind of gets away from here. There we go.